Nice to meet you. It's Trails in the Sky, everybody. Hello again. Thanks for coming. Last time we uh, met up with new character Tita, who's spoilers probably gonna be our new party member for this chapter. She's a young inventor girl who was trying to fix some lights in the tunnels. We helped her out. She fights with a huge gun. That's cool. <laughs> and we helped her back to the factory. We explored town. We met up with the new guild, Bracer Guild Lodge, led by Kilika, is the manager here. We picked up a couple of side quests, so we're gonna be doing those. Before I really get started, well, we had a good run of like 70 episodes without any mishaps, but here we are. I'm having to redo a recording, which means the next couple of episodes are not gonna be blind. Except maybe the end of the next episode, because, um... I did a lot of, on my first recording, I did a lot of, um, like, um, searching around. Now that I know effectively where to go to on these couple of side quests, I think we'll save a lot more time so we can actually sneak in some, like, blind stuff into the next episode. I'm gonna try to do that. Thankfully, there weren't any big moments that, like, you guys missed out on my honest reaction. There was a couple of really funny moments and one boss fight I that was pretty tough that I did on my first go, and I'm... Hoping I can repeat that trick, but I'm not a hundo on that. But all that said, um, yeah, I'm sorry, it happened at last. Uh, I, we did some um, streaming earlier, and uh, I had left my streaming um, settings on, so... Uh, unbeknownst, and just started recording this game with those settings on, and the resulting footage, the audio levels made it unusable, so we have to do this a second pass. Trust me, the benefit of getting my live reaction from the last last batch of... my, my, my last attempt at recording, you would not appreciate how bad the audio levels are between my voice and the game, so... We're, 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 not, we're not gonna do that. What we are gonna do is get on with those side quests. So as a reminder, we picked up two, and one of those seems pretty dang easy. Temp Library, and we just gotta go do some library... library work there. Or maybe ask to pick up some real slack on a few odds and ends before the real work begins. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Gotta go back to the archives. We found that last time when we were exploring the uh, factory. And then the other quest, we have to fight something called a Chronocider, so... That's gonna be fun. Man, the, the groovy music in Zeiss is a real winner. I was initially... Knowing Falcom's penchant for, like, real butt rock in all their video games, this confused me, Trails in the Sky, with its, like, feel-good kind of lounge music. But especially something like this Zeiss song makes it worth it, though. Like, I'm, 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 like, fully on board with this vibe. So here's the archives and here's Constance. Let's get on with the task. Um, excuse me? We saw your request on the bulletin board. Oh my, you're here already. I only just put in the request a little while ago. Hehe. <laughs> Well, we had just come in to change assignments, so we were ready for work. Well, shall we get started then? Let's get started, shall we? That's fine. This is about hiring the temp librarian, right? Yes, that's right. It's turned out to be much more of an ordeal than expected. What kind of ordeal? I'll explain that in a moment. Beforehand, though, I have a matter that I would like you to help settle. Consider it a favor, if you will. What kind of matter are you referring to? The Archives loaned out some books out to various central factory departments. Sometimes they keep them past the due date and don't pay the fees. First, I'd like you to get our books back. What? That's simple. Where do we need to go? Let's see. They should be in the third floor design room and the fourth floor lab and clinic. Third floor design room, fourth floor lab and clinic. Got it. Is that everything? Uh, yes. Please come back once you have them. Okay, we will. We'll start immediately. So yeah, first job. We gotta be like little 
repo people for um, getting books back, huh? <laughs> Gonna get real tough with these uh, loans people. Well, actually, it turns out, now that we're doing this job, all we need to do is get the actual books back. We don't have to, like, get tough with anybody who borrowed them. <laughs> Look, we don't have to, we don't have to ask about the late fees. So, it's all good. So, for example, here we are, third floor. This was the design room. And the book is right here. Septium Optic Annals. Yeah, we don't actually even have to talk to the people who borrowed these books out. Apparently, we can just, like, nab them. So, all right. But, you know, I know we have a quick look at the book. Now that we have it, we can just tell Constance that it took us a while to find these books to explain away our... Uh, uh, the time we spend taking a quick look at these books ourselves. There's the Septium Optic Annals, published by the Zai Central Factory. In general theory, the current state of orbital technology research... Oh goodness, let's not read this whole thing. This, this reads like someone's thesis, someone's dissertation, kind of, but it's very confusing. Let's look at this, look at this uh, techno babble. I believe that's what they would write, uh, the, the, the writers for Star Trek. They would write in the word techno babble into certain parts uh, of dialogue that they were writing when they needed like some kind of scientific explanation for something happening in the show, and then they would pass it on to whoever was good at coming up with techno babble, and they would fill in with like the the, the this this right here. <laughs> so th I, this this is the energy we get here. I I feel very perplexed what we're talking. I mean, not the first page already got me confused, but here we have. Statistical predictions of precipitation defects due to interference field formation. Relative cascade geometry and propulsion efficiency under low orbital energy conditions. Cascade geometry? Oh. Sounds like uh, they've been doing a little um, parallel research with Black Mesa over here. Oh. I wonder if we could get Dr. Freeman to solve whatever problems eventually gonna crop up from this research. And finally, Mechanical calculation acceleration through the use of orbital energy storing cycloidal gears within a tourbillon. Ugh. And then we get into this, which I think ultimately this general theory just ends up saying we don't know how warpments work, so great. Ugh. I feel. I feel like an intellectual. like smidgen after reading all of that. I feel like a moron. Well, anyway, the last two books are here in the um, in the clinic and the other thing on the fourth floor. And the second book is right here. Kitty Talk for Dummies. Ah, now this sounds way more up my alley. I'm a dummy. Pronunciation of the feline language has distinct characteristics depending on the region and may differ slightly from the following information. This could be considered comparable to dialects in the human tongue. In addition, since a number of elongated vowel sounds, indicated by the tilde character, are intimately related to a cat's personality and emotional state, there is a quite a broad range of variation. So this is in fact a book on how to talk to cats. Oh boy, meow is you're absolutely right. And then go. That's what cat has gone go ever. I, does any cat make that noise? I'm not convinced. And like, what what is this? So we meet again, fleshy thing. That's meow. <laughs> I. Yeah. Oh, here's Fumia. That's a strong one. <laughs> Somehow I feel even dumber having read that than I did reading the dissertation on orbital energy. What the? What, what was that book? What the hell? You can't talk to cats, goddammit! Uh. Anyway, final book is in this room. Tomorrow's Cooking! Tomorrow's cooking. Let's take a quick look at this then. Recipes for the new millennium. Today I will be introducing one of my newest cooking recipes, especially for those readers of this book. And that recipe is none other than drum roll, please. Ugh, that that made me hurt so much when I read this first. Like that's oh, that's really a, I I can't read like a proper book written with like this kind of snappy dialogue. Maybe a blog post I could handle, but like this is oh, that's so annoying. They're written like that. Can you guess what it is? It's 
Buya Bay, which I don't actually know still exactly how that word's pronounced. I know it's not the Buila Bay Sea. <laughs> I know that much, but how exactly the, the it translates into English, the French pronunciation transfers into English, I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I've heard someone pronounce how that is said, but I, I don't know. Yes, that's right. This delectable dish of unobtrusive monster bits is one that everyone can enjoy. Okay. Now whip out your sword and let's get started. So, uh, yeah, as it happens, this looks like to be, in fact, a recipe. So, we look through all this stuff, because those are all parts that we can, in fact, get. This, great, this dish is great for lunchboxes and scaring small children. Hmm. So, in fact, we get the Booyah Bay Plus recipe for reading that book. So, I felt pretty lucky to have started to look at these books um, when I first came through here on the first recording attempt. Because, like, oh, there actually was a reward for leafing through the books. We got a new recipe. So, let's uh, return the books then. Job's done. Oh, are you done? Heh <laughs> we brought them for ya. Handed over the annals, and the cooking, and the kitty talk for dummies. All of the books have been returned. Quest is done. Good. Now, we have all of the books again. I thank you for your assistance. Eh, <laughs> it was no big deal. We didn't have any issues. That's good to hear. In that case, perhaps I should go ahead and ask you for help with my favorite type of work. Oh, that's right. You mentioned having some significant problems somewhere along the line. So, what kind of work is it? Just like before, we need some overdue materials returned. The book in question is called The Herb Woodpecker. We'll make a note of that. Right. Herb Wood Pecker. <laughs> so, it's a book on birds, right? So, do you have any clues for us? Yes, as a matter of fact. Take a look at this. Approach the man of stone standing in silence within the mountain village pond, and he shall receive. So this is like, whoa, hold on a minute. This looks like a modus operandi we've encountered before. Could it be the freaking Phantom Thief again? Messing with us? Uh -huh. Okay, I wrote that down. But what the heck is it? It was written on a card that was taken from the book. I imagine that it's some kind of hint as to its whereabouts. A hint of bad poetry, maybe. So, it was only borrowed because someone with way too much time on their hands wanted to hide it somewhere? Evidently so. It's the sort of trick that researchers used to play on each other long ago. I have no idea what would possess someone to hide a book of all things. But we certainly have our fair share of unusual characters. It's not surprising that any of them might follow such a bizarre costume. Anyway, I leave this matter in your capable hands. Please, bring the book back. Hey, hold on a second. Is this the only lead we have? I'm afraid so. Uh, but the guild sent you, so I have every confidence in your ability. Ugh. Well, that's just... awesome. Understood. It will be difficult work, but we will do all that we can. You may have to search every nook and cranny in Zass, but I'm sure you'll find it. I'll be waiting here. When you do find it, please bring it back to me. Ugh, let's get this show on the road, then. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you again. So, yeah, it's in fact a redo of that whole Hunt for the Candelabra. Candelabrum, Candelubla in in Rouen, yeah? We got an extra quest now, Temp Librarian Plus. And we're gonna be looking for a book with this clue. Thankfully, I worked out very quickly what it could be. So, I mean, it's gotta be in Zeiss, right? Because that's where the, we're stuck doing these quests. And really, only the only real candidate is the village of Elmo, 
which is marked there on the map. It's quite close to the mountains, uh, quite close to the um, shore as well. But it's also got the Japanese symbol for an onsen there, a hot spring resort, which usually is something you find in the mountains, you know, volcanic activity and all that. So, so that's going to be our clue. That's going to be our best lead on where to go look for that. We're going to look for a pond there with a stone guy standing in it. Okay. Seems doable. Now, I'll admit, the first time I uh, did this quest on my first recording attempt, I figured that's, you know, I, I felt like I had this inkling that we would probably end up going to Elmo anyway at some point, like a, like a separate side quest directing us there separately. So my in first inkling was that I'm not actually going to do this quest, Temp Librarian Part 2, or Temp Librarian Plus, as it was in the uh, book. Oh, look at this Escalator. I believe that's what this high-tech device is called. Hmm. Fancy tech. Ooh. But anyway, yeah, so my first inkling was I'm not going to do that right now. I'll do it like when we head for Elmo with a more proper, like, quest reason. Oh, let's go turn in the first temp librarian thing to Kilika. Well, ha! All right, a little bit of cash into the pocket and no rank advancement, but hmm. Welcome back. It looks like you finished your job. If you clear any other contracts, make sure you come here and report it. Groovy. No new assignments. So yeah, I was thinking that no, I'm not gonna do that right now. But the thing is, we gotta go hunt this Chrono Cider, which is in the Trat Plains. That is in fact to the south if we look at the map here, Trat Plains Road. So I figured if I if I'm in the neighborhood, I might as well stop in Elmo to have a look if I can find this uh, book there. And as it turned out, hunting for the Chrono Cider was a little bit of a a search. So, hey, look, a sheep. It's the creepy sheeps that we fought on that one um, side quest in the Mountains of Crone. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting that they show up now as regular mobs. And they have to be a little bit tougher than they were on our first go, right? Because we were able to beat a pack of them. But, but. Anyway, so yeah, I was looking very far, far and wide, and I ended up looking at the Elmo branch first for the Chrono Cider with no luck. So I ended up going to Elmo anyway and getting the book. Spoiler alert, it is indeed there. So since I'm now kind of retracing what I did in my failed recording attempt, uh, we are going to go there after all. I don't know if it's appropriate, like we should have like waited for later, but I don't know. Also, look at how terrifying this bunny rabbit is. This is an armored rabbit. I like, ugh. This device, device, this design is kind of yikes. It's very menacing. Ugh. Also hits pretty dang hard. Oh, I should probably be saving CP. I kind of wanted to stockpile it for that Chrono Cider fight. It kind of helped in our showdown with the Chrono Cider to have. Oh, well, we got it now, so yeah. Maybe a bit of cheating, I don't know. I, I'm not particularly miffed that I used the stockpile your limit break strats to beat, beat Chrono Cider. Because, you know, we're going out of our way to go there a little early here, so I think... I think, you know, we can use a little edge of that sort to even things out. Uh, okay, um, anyway. We keep heading down here. Also, yeah, let's have a quick look. No sign of this Chrono Cider on these sides. There's one enemy I wanted to... Yeah, we fought at least this guy. Here's a new enemy right here. It's not the Chrono Cider. It's the Bane Cobra. Oh, yes. Welcome to Trat Plains. Oh, dear. I didn't know they could do that. I've killed these guys every time without them really getting to do anything, so I didn't know they could call in backup. Ugh, ooh, eek. Oh, now the Bane guy is spitting venom? Well, isn't that... Isn't that just hunky-dory? Yeah. Not close enough. Here we go. And here's a neat thing. I only realized we really have gotten a lot of, um... 
a lot of uh, EP after we unlocked all of our slots in our orbiment, so I think we can actually be a little free with our uh, heals here. Well, that's a problem. Okay, then. I suppose... I, I suppose it doesn't surprise you to know that this did not happen on my first go. We had a pretty easy time here. The monsters are not that much of a problem. Um... Oh boy. Okay. Okay, to go heals HP and cures some KO. We got an Azelia Rose. Alright. Don't worry, Josh. Just, just sniff on this cocktail. And we'll get you back standing. Oh, wow, I've never noticed that the portrait, like, actually looks all downcast when someone's KO'd. Wow. Okay, well, now it's personal. Now we gotta beat this Cobra up, you little. I gotta build up my CP. Oh, this throws my whole plan out of the loop. I'm not sure if we can take Chronocider now. Oh, no. Oh, now the turn order was favoring us. We got to pop off this heal. Right away. Hmm. I did not fight all the enemies. I know I've had a habit of, like, fighting every enemy for the first time I encountered them, but the planes have so many mobs in them that it's like... Oh, no. It's just not a good idea. Like, it's... Oh, no! Well, at least we're getting that CP back, huh? Holy moly! Um, yeah, um... There's just so many mobs here that, no, it's, it'd be crazy to fight all of them, but we're doing okay. This this fight is not indicative of how I did been doing with these mobs. I've been doing an okay job fighting them previously. Ignore this state of violence that we're in. By the way, like, oh, well. These slippery snakes, impossible to get a hit on. Ugh. All right, now I'm mad. Apparently my mad, mad state. Oh my God! Ooh, these serpents. We're not gonna fight anybody after this, because I'm hoping I get, like, extra XP for every... Oh my lord! You shitty snake! I'm so mad now! What is this?! Not now. What is this with the... the Wow, Bane Cobra is an appropriate name for this. Okay, I gotta save my resources, so now... Hey, a chest I didn't find on my first go. What the heck? You have found Zilch. Nada, nothing. Gotta save my resources, so I'm gonna go back to town and heal, and... Ugh, part three. I gotta kill this damn Cobra now. Now I'm, like, freaking... Ugh. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Well, at least you guys are getting some real quality entertainment, even though, the, like, like you know, you're getting some real blind reactions here, despite me, like, re-recording this, because, like, this is, like, this is some genuine, like, surprise and rage at what this freaking Cobra is doing to me. Okay, third time, you son of a... Ugh. But no! Oh, now I hit the run button. Oh my, oh my god, the tilt is real. This, this Cobra's got my number. I got a preemptive attack, so... Okay, well that's annoying because I... Now I'm making it too easy for me, so... Anyway, um, yeah, if you notice, like, Estelle, like, is now the damage dealer, really. She does, like, a hundred more than Joshua does, rather consistently. Because we bought that huge stick for her last time. Okay, great. Good to go. I'd rather have gone a fight without it being preemptive, just so we could see if that guy tried to summon guys if I could beat them this time. But uh, Raza Raza Raza. 
God damn it, it's freaking... 25 minutes in and this is gonna bullshit. It was supposed to be a fast playthrough because I knew what to do because I'd freaking fought them. Oh my goodness. Come here, you sheep. Oh no, it's 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 the bunny rabbit. Yeah, I still gotta fight some guys because I do wanna build up I do wanna build up the CP for both of our crew to have um the the limits on us. That's how I beat Chronosider. It wasn't just up to that, like I also did a really hard fought fight against Chronosider with, you know with with all the tricks and traps I could pull out of my pocket, but the like a couple of, like, limit breaks I could pull off were rather deciding. Well, actually, did I even do Estelle's limit break? Hmm. I don't remember. I think I just used Josh's, like, a, once or twice. Hmm. Anyway, I do... Here's something I do like. Look at all these sheep here. Like, it's like it's an actual flock of sheep. I like the environmental details here. There's another Bane Cobra. All these sheep's messing with us. No, oh, wait a second. Oh, there it is. I was like, here's a chest. I'm not gonna fight all these sheep, that's for sure, because there's so many of them. Oh god! Ah! Well, I tried to preserve. That's the one reaction that I regret we didn't get on the original recording, was my genuine horror of being first like, Oh, that's a lot of sheep, I'm not fighting all these. And then monsters appear and there's a million sheep in the encounter and me just going, Oh my god! <laughs> oh, bother. Nah, it didn't land as well the second time. So this lone sheep, I will give a bit of a beat down to. By the way, you may have noticed, like, boy, this actually is a proper plains if you look at uh, how huge is this place we're walking around in. Oh my god, that sheep's going loco! Oh no, I'm. Whoa, I've gotten a huge buff to strength and. Okay, that's how you want to play it, creepy sheepy. So hold on, is the, is the explanation that Creepy Sheepy goes loco and that annoys the character so much that they're like, STOP IT ALREADY and they attack super hard, but their defense is down? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, like you'll notice, this is a proper ass plains, this was Trat Plains called. So that's why it took me a long time, well this time it took a long time because I kept bumbling against Bane Cobra. But, like, it took me a long time looking for a Chronosider, because of course I had to be thorough and hunt around everywhere for that thing. But now I know where it is, so we can save a bunch of time, but... Just kill this guy, this is called a Grasshopper. Cute. And dead. <laughs> kind of brutal. Wah hey! Alright, I think that's all the enemies I'm gonna fight for now. I don't think I wanna fight any further. Here we are at Elmo Village, then. We are kind of in the mountains, yeah? Here's the souvenir shop. So yeah, of course, Zeiss not really a center of tourism, I don't feel like, but an onsen place is gonna drag people in. Look at all these nice souvenirs going here. What have we here? Customers? Come right in. Have a look around the place. I recommend our spring-boiled eggs. Oh, and I did- I think I was able to afford that. Yes, I can. Let's get a fluffy spring egg, and then my budget is destroyed again, so I can't actually buy any of this. So yeah, it's like spring cooked then, I guess. It, uh, it's soft and rubbery. All it does is heal. Not fancy, but fine for me. So now we got the recipe. Uh, fluffy spring egg. Needs a bunch of eggs and some salt. We can do that. That's all we need for now. Heh, <laughs> nice. A little date vacation to the hot springs? Listen here, you little shit with the overly loquacious name, Quante? Come on, kid. Hey, it's new people! Wow, they're young! Or maybe they just look young, but are really old. Hmm. That boy over there is one major hottie. Hey, you guys are from Zeiss, right? Right? What's popular there now? I hope she's talking about Joshua, just because, you know, I hope she's not talking about the little children here. Hmm. Well, once again, I know where the statue is here, so we're not gonna explore the entirety of Elmo, although as you can see, it's not a massive place. 
I'm sure we're gonna be dropping down here eventually, so we'll we'll do it. We'll, we'll look around a little bit more then, I'm sure. But now let's just go for the inn, the Maple Leaf. So my first reaction was, oh my god, the place that I was imagining to be Canadian has a place called the Maple Leaf. But then I think about it. Was this place mentioned somewhere, and was that originally where I got the idea in my head that size would be extra Canadian? Was that there's a place called the Maple Leaf? I think that's what happened, because otherwise it's a massive coincidence. So I think we're gonna go with that. Now here's a bunch of interesting recipes here. Hello, and welcome to the Maple Leaf Inn. We also have authentic Eastern cuisine. We hope you have a wonderful time. And sure enough, we got a wild veggie pot that I can't afford. And there's three new things to get here that I can't afford. Including this thing which heals you for a thousand. Now that's strong eggnog. And monster sushi. Mm -hmm -hmm. Sounds good. So I guess like, yeah. I wonder, is because Eastern Calvard is in the East. So is Calvard supposed to be like, you know, East Asian inspired? Like real world East Asia? Since since Eastern Eastern vibes seem to refer to like East Asian in this game, of course we don't really know since we don't get to see the whole continent map. We have no idea if there's something even further past Calvard. Although it's interesting that the culture would have reached this far over here. I believe if I read correctly that newest Trails game that I think isn't even out in the West yet, uh, Kuro no Kiseki Trails of Black. I believe that is set in Calvard, so it'd be interesting if someone has taken a look at that. If there is like a strong East Asian flavor to the setting of that game. Eh. Anyway, this is interesting. Check this out. It's Mrs. Mao who gets a cut-in portrait. So that made me go, oh, okay. Welcome everyone. This is the famous Maple Leaf Inn. We have lots of fine springs including our famous Eastern-style outdoor bath. Nice. Really happy to be here. So the instant I saw that, I knew that, oh, okay, we are, like, probably gonna be coming back to Elmo Village, not just for a side quest, but for the main plot. I feel like they don't give characters, like, cut-in portraits in this game, unless they're, like, you know, important to the plot, so that they come up in the main quest. So that's a big, big flag. What a quiet day. Days like this are nice from time to time. Uh, if every day was like this though, it would be bad for business. <laughs> Good job, Ed boy. All right, so if we go back here, you may have guessed, like, look at this. This is where the springs themselves are. Let me get back here. Thankfully, I don't think we can go in here. I didn't even want to test because this is a step above the locker rooms in Genius Royal Academy. I don't want to walk into a freaking hot springs that, you know, one of us don't belong into. Like, come on now. Because there's nothing like a hot bath after fishing. For that matter, there's nothing like a hot bath after just about anything. What a luxurious idea that is. Yeah. So at this point I was like, oh goodness, I should probably leave. Because I had actually explored the entirety of the town and I couldn't find any pond where the um, statue could be. Thankfully, I looked at the map one last time and there's like a little nook that was very easy to miss out behind the hotel. So, so I actually, no kidding, I was like, okay, we gotta go back there. And then I very barely managed it. Look at this. We've got a pond here with a, you know, lantern, a stone lantern, classic Eastern style, I'm sure. And then I was like, gosh darn it, I can't actually get there in any way. Like, you know, I don't know how to get to it and get the thing. Since, you know, it was supposed to look look there for the book. And once again, I, with dumb luck, I kind of stumbled a little further back here. And look, hidden passage. Found a package wrapped in oiled paper. Inside was the herb woodpecker. Oh, I just realized I never read this book when I got it. I forgot all about that, but it's a book, so let's take a quick look. Oh, it's an ornithology thing. Ah, oh, but it's nine pages long, so I really cannot give you... Okay. I cannot, like... I'm not going to subject you guys to reading this whole thing, but okay. It's, a, it's an ornithology thing about, um... 
a brilliant azure bird called the herb woodpecker. Fascinating. Oh, hold on. I gotta at least skim this. It's a. It doesn't peck holes in the trunks of trees. It cannot. Okay, the herb woodpecker cannot do it. Okay, so they steal... They will usurp a nesting hole made by another species of woodpecker. Okay. Woodpecker! Aha. Uh -huh. Very fascinating. A new... Hold on. Invasive species. A new larger species of woodpecker came to live in the forest inhabited by the herb woodpecker. It had to have managed to migrate by way of boat from its distant native land. Oh. Is it safe to take woodpeckers on a boat? They'll they'll put holes in your boat. Oh my goodness, that's dangerous. Ha <laughs> Now tell me what the other species of woodpecker is. Don't just like um don't just like cover it up like this even though it is an invasive species. I want to know what it is. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh dear, these woodpeckers are in decline. At their eventual downfall? Oh no! Right, this is an actual ecological lesson. Like, abrupt changes due to, like, in introduction of species will deal with um, other species way faster than they can adapt. So, yeah. So those other species of woodpeckers have continued to... Oh, the other woodpeckers ha are still fine because they did were able to peck holes. Interesting. Okay, but they're not... Okay, thank goodness. They're not extinct. They're just, I guess, endangered. On the Herb Scenic Route. I don't know where the Herb Scenic Route is. I forgot to check what the name of the road to the east is called. Um, the one that heads for Gransel from Zeiss. That might be Herb Scenic Route. I don't know. Man, it's funny. Every time I do these, like, I'm... Oh, no, I gotta re-record an episode. At least I'll get further than I did last time. I feel like somehow I get stuck yammering about stuff, and I'm actually pretty much on par with previous recording, if not a little bit delayed. Look at this. Okay, well, no wasting time now. We still gotta take care of that Chrono Cider while we're down here, yeah? So let's go. Oh, I think there was a chest over here. I'm gonna have a quick look. May have been a chest? Yes. A tiara bomb. Wouldn't be empty if you hadn't already looted it, now would it? Mm. But yes, we'll let this wildlife survive here. Interesting ecology also, like all the grasshoppers are on this side congregating. Kind of like that flock of sheep, not as flock-like, but still, all the, all the grasshoppers are on that one side of the plains, so... Interesting, a little bit of like, you know, monster ecology going on. Anyway, Chrono Cider is over here. Uh, ooh, one more chest. Lots of tiara bombs. You have found the missing link. I don't know what that means. Uh, yeah, lots of, um, 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 um. What Jismus calls it, uh. Oh, I, my, my, my brain completely blanked out. I'm sorry. What are we doing? Yeah, Chrono Cider. Yeah, 